Greetings, this is August 18th, 2018, and we're looking at an image from one year ago today. Now we're rolling into a screen from a different system. This is the six-hour map from yesterday, and here is the six-hour map from today. So it's getting hotter. And here is all the infrared that was being displayed this morning. It looks a little different from last year, and... Uh, I'm not sure on the hectares involved. I'll check into that on the BC Wildfire site. We're jumping over to the radiative scan from the RSAC, uh, looking at the lower half of the province. There is a lot of heat in the southern, southeastern portion, the central portion, but uh, surprisingly, it's looking pretty clear in the South Caribou. And before we tour around and uh, make a comparison between yesterday and today, I'd like to jump in and just take a look at Golden. Uh, we're seeing screens for the last 24 hours, uh, zooming into the area just to the east of Golden. This is the activity that's been occurring for the last 24 hours. And we'll just jump to the last 12 hours to see where the most recent hotspots are. So this will be an area to watch now we've moved over to central and northern British Columbia. We'll jump in and look at Telegraph Creek on the radiative scan. Uh, this gives you an indication of where the heat is coming from around this region. If we pull back now, looking at the NRC data, I'm going to roll between yesterday evening and this morning. And we'll just zoom in. There's yesterday. And here is this morning. So there is some change, there's some movement to the southwest. We'll move south now to Babine, Bulkley, and uh, taking a look at the infrared in that area image from this morning uh, gives you a chance to see where the flow is. Looks like it's all on the eastern flanks. We can also see the top of the Shovel Lake fire at the bottom of the screen. We'll come back and look at that in detail, but first let's look at Nadina. This is south of Houston. We'll start with the six hour map. This is the most recent infrared being displayed. Here's for the last 12 hours, all the infrared. And here's all the infrared over the last 24 hours. So that's what's burning right now. And it's made an expansion eastwards over the last few days between Francois Lake and the Nechaco Reservoir. We're going to move eastwards along Francois Lake. Now we're looking at the Shovel Lake Fire to the north and the Island Fire to the south. Highway 16 is running between the two. And we'll start off looking at the six-hour infrared, the most recent. And there was a lot of controlled patterning. Here we're looking at the 12-hour map and now all the infrared being displayed for the last 24 hours. This is what's burning right now. Let's zoom in to the eastern edge of the Shovel Lake fire. Here's the last six hours, and I'm seeing what looks to be control strategies at work. And there's everything that's burning. This is a region with a lot of activity right now. Let's go south of Francois Lake, uh, the Unshaw Red Hills area. We can see everything being displayed most recently, the six hour map. Now everything that's being shown for 12 hours and now everything that was burning for the last 24 hours. A lot of what appears to be control signatures, control strategy perhaps at work there. And those fire zones are approximately 15 kilometers to the southwest from Unchaw Lake and approximately 10 kilometers to the east of Unchaw Lake. And at the bottom of your screen, we can see the northern flank of the fire at Cheslada Lake. And that also appears to have some signature patterning in the IFR that's come outside the perimeter to the northern flank. We've moved further south again. Now we're looking at the Tweedsmer fires to the left of your screen, this is a, a complex fire. There was several starts there. It's considered a modified response, meaning they're going to let this kind of take its own course and monitor the situation. Zooming in, 
there's a lot of heat, uh, a lot of red, yellows, greens, that's at the high end of the scale, and uh, these stringers of purple and blues stretching eastwards. Each one of those red dots can represent uh, six, seven hundred megawatts of energy coming off that 750 meter square. Let's take a look on the NRC data for that region. Uh, this is the six hour map, most recent activity, very hot lot of new infrared showing up. Now we'll roll into the 12 hour map. This is everything burning for the last 12 hours. And finally the 24 hour map. I'd also like to draw your attention to the right hand side of this panel, uh, the Quenelle fire. No infrared showing there. That could be a good sign. And here's all the perimeters being displayed for this region. We're moving further south again. This is the Caribou. There are a couple of hot spots, uh, Alexis and Alkali. Other than that, fairly clear, and uh, we may not be seeing all the infrared. It could be obscured, but uh, definitely not as hot as some of the other areas. Let's go southeast to the Monashies, the Selkirks. A lot of activity in this region. Uh, we're going to zoom in. This is the area around Arrow Lake, Christina Lake, and Castle Gar. Zooming into the lower portion of Arrow Lake, uh, there has been some increased heat overnight. There's also activity on that fire just east of Christina Lake that's kind of crossing the border, so another one to watch. Now we've moved to Highway 3 west of Creston. Uh, this is Blazed Creek and it's moved up the mountainside north of Highway 3. We were looking at the most recent 6-hour, 12-hour activity, and now we're looking at the 24-hour activity. The perimeter appears to have crossed over the highway, but that's got to be verified with the BC Wildfire Maps because they've got the accurate on-the-ground reporting. We're looking at computer models. Now we're moving further east. This is the Meachin fire that uh, has put an evacuation order around St. Mary's Lake to the top part of your screen. And uh, it's been heading east towards Kimberley. And I'll say it does not look as hot this morning. Here's a screen from last night on the NRC data. Uh, we can see the infrared approaching the valley of St. Mary's Lake. And now we're rolling into a screen from this morning and definitely a reduction in the infrared. Check out the BC wildfire updates in the links below. It definitely looks like eastward movement has been uh, arrested and uh, there is one infrared spot that appears to be going northwards over the ridgeline. Now we're moving westwards. Uh, this is the South Okanagan, the Ashnola, the Smilkameen and there's been two ongoing fires uh, one at Eastgate, one at Karameas, and there's another that's up in Olala, and all of these are looking hot. The fire at Eastgate appears to be making some northward progression, and the fire at Olala appears to have about a dozen more infrared hot spots around the perimeter, so it it's not growing as quickly as some other fires, but uh, definitely a lot of activity there. The RSAC system uh, kind of crashed on me just before I got to Vancouver Island, so we'll take a look at the NRC data. Some of these infrared sites, they get overloaded with users and with the data strings that go with each one of those infrared hotspots. They have a database attached with the location, the uh, temperatures, the fuel types, so there's a lot of information that's got to be conveyed. We're looking at the most recent six hours last night. Now we're looking at everything that was going on yesterday and today. It looks like Zabalos is still under evacuation order and I am seeing some infrared moving slightly westwards. Just a few new infrared hotspots. Thank you very much for watching. This has been a really quick tour uh, looking at the NRC system, the RSAC radiative scan. I was trying to get onto the Canadian Wildland Fire Information System. Very difficult to get on there. Lots of data, lots of users. So hopefully this gives you some insight to 
where the heat is in the province and uh, what's happening this morning. I'd also like to express my gratitude to the wildfire crews, the volunteers out there. It's uh, a hectic month. Please be safe and keep your nose to the breeze.